Okay, welcome to uh, episode one of our Ward's Airline Farm Radio Restoration Slash Conversion. So um, this is the uh, the model 4B13, which we believe, uh, if you remember from our first video, is a uh, probably related, more closely related to a Belmont 4B113. Still can't find the schematic on it, but as you could see, this radio is really simple. You'll see here there's four tube sockets right here, right? There's not much going on. Um, really simple, honestly. And, um, you know, a couple of wax caps, which will change out. That's easy. Volume control. This is your dial string, which, by the way, I did find the pointer. The pointer was inside the unit, and it's right there, and it's not bent, and it's in good shape. So we have our pointer, so we'll put, protect that. Now, I did notice, uh, I'm guessing this radio was made in 1945, and I'll tell you why I think that. This has that rubberized um, wire. So this is when they made the conversion from cloth wire to um, regular rubber insulated wire. The problem is that most of it disintegrates. I remember when I worked on the Crossley, um, the Bing, I'm not the Crossley, the Bing Crosby um, phonograph radio. That was 1946. And just by looking at some of the components under here, I'm thinking this is mid-40s. So this, this, um, this IF right here is very small. <clears throat> that certainly wasn't around in the 30s. And a lot of this wire is bad. So um, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on the speaker wire so I can show you what I'm talking about. And that's why you don't power these things up until you know what you're dealing with. So um, if you look right here, you'll see that the speaker wire, the insulation is missing. Right there. It's cracked. Right? So if you power this thing up, you're going to short yourself out, and you're going to you're going to screw up, and you're going to mess up the radio. So um, because this radio is so simple, it's really not a lot to it. I'm probably going to end up replacing all this wiring and uh, putting in modern wire, so we don't have to deal with any of that. Now there may be a couple of things here that I'm not going to be able to get to easily. I won't do those unless they're cracked. Um, so uh, part of this is going to be replacing all those wires. Um, the other part is going to be cleaning the chassis. And then um, let's take a look at the top. Let me change the shot and I will uh, come back on that. Be right back. Okay, looking at this from the top down, um, it's simple, <laughs> really. Now I do notice that um, this tuning cap has yellow on it. And that is indicative of uh, a chemical process of plating. Let me get that phone, I'll be right back. Okay, so back to this. Um, I'm seeing this yellow residue on the tuning cap, and I remember, again, when I worked on that Philco, uh, I keep saying, yeah, it was a Philco Bing Crosby, uh, model 1201. It was a record player slash radio. I saw that yellow powder and didn't know what it was and was messing with it, and uh, turns out that that is probably toxic. It's, I think, chromium or cadmium, and we don't want to mess with that here, so we're going we're gonna to make sure we don't uh, disturb that. Um, but the rest of the chassis can be easily cleaned. Um, if you look at these wires that go to the uh, built-in antenna, which is kind of unique, it looks like they took wire and poured it into like a mold. And uh, it looks like cardboard is impregnated in there. I'm not so sure what that is, but a lot of dust, I know that. So we're going to take this out. Um, these wires look like they've got um, green disease. So we're going we're gonna to replace these wires. I should then be able to, um, to cut the wires for the speaker cut the wires here and replace them and um, and then carefully mark these these wires here uh, and because uh, I don't have a schematic so I gotta be careful so I know by looking at the um, the terminal block here for the batteries let's see if I can uh, make some determination here so it looks like right here let me see if I can get this on the shot A lot of dust on this thing, but it looks like somebody wrote B right here, letter B. So that's my B plus. This is going to be my filament. So I know that these two wires go to the filament, and I know these two wires are going to B plus. All right. So we'll uh, we'll be careful there. Once I cut the wires and do all that stuff, um, then I'll be able to take this thing outside and I'll get the shop vac and just blow it off good and get all that crap out of there. And I'm sure this thing is going to clean up really really well. This radio also has 
a feature that if you're um, if you're at a thousand hours of battery use in this original radio there's a, like a low power switch here which you can flick and I assume it gives you a little more juice out of the battery I'm not sure how they did it or how it works but that's what it says on the back cover so uh, I'm gonna trust them <laughs> so um, and then I've got this wire right here which comes off of this antenna block right here and it's a long wire so I, I'm assuming that someone may have added a long wire antenna on this thing but I don't really know yet so we'll get to that when we get to it so uh, let me start documenting the radio um, and then we'll you know we'll clean all this up again look at this wire right here this is going to the, to the grid of this uh, tube and it's uh, yeah it's cracked so these wires are all gonna have to be replaced this is a gentle exercise here because these are going into the IF can so we're not gonna we're not gonna remove these cans so we're probably gonna have to just go cut and, and uh, splice there but we'll get there um, this radio will look like it's brand new when it's done so um, by the way I know I mentioned in my first earlier video um, the, the first video that I um, put up on this that I was gonna try to hook up the battery eliminator on this and see if it worked with the shape of these wires no way so this is not going to get powered up until the wires are changed so I want to make sure you knew why I made that command decision no way I'm going to take a chance on shorting anything out okay let me do some snipping be back okay so I've taken the uh, the entire radio outside and got out my shop vac and blew all the dust off it's amazing what you find when you do that so um, let me show you what I, what I was able to uncover here somebody wrote in pencil let's see if we could zoom in here Somebody wrote in pencil, blue B minus, and then they've got a B star 90 volt, yellow, and down here they have A minus and A plus, one and a half volt, right here. Okay, if you flip it over, someone actually wrote A minus and one and a half volt right there. Well, you could actually read it now, so that's cool. So that's been cleaned. Let's put that aside. I do notice there's a little corrosion on this wire right here. So I'm going to have to ohm this out and see what it looks like. There is a mica cap right in here, as you would expect. They also have an antenna lead and a ground lead in here. And these are the wires that I cut, obviously, to get, get this thing uh, off the radio. And it uh, looks like there's some little staples here that hold it in place but generally a nice looking radio antenna All right there's the back there's the external ground and the external antenna okay so that's been cleaned and we have our chassis and our chassis looks a whole lot better just by blowing off the dirt now it still needs to be cleaned and polished um, but, um, but she's she's looking real good right there just dust right um, Looks like I have one original tube at least. This tube says Ward's Airline right here. And uh, I haven't pulled this one out. Let's see what this one says on it. This is a Super Ward's Airline as well. So these all seem to be original tubes. I'm not sure how much use this radio got, if it got any at all. And um, as far as this tuning cap goes, it is rusty. And um, I'm probably am going to have to remove it from the radio. And given that I'm going to rewire this thing anyway, um, it probably makes sense to do that while I have it out. I can soak this thing in the evaporust, get all the rust off of it, and then uh, mount it back up. I did notice that this radio does not have a dial light. But it does have a piece of dial glass, which I can remove and clean. There's a lot of dust behind there. When I blew it out, all kinds of dust flew out of there. So I can, uh, I can remove that and, um, and see what it looks like once I clean it. And this is your uh, your tuner. This is where the dial string was wrapped around. I'm going to have to figure out how to uh, route the dial string. Looks like it comes around here. Comes to this post right here. And wraps around and goes back. So I'll figure that out when the time is right. we got a lot more work to do before we get to that. And I also... Um, let me put this in a safe place. I also blew out the cabinet, which I want to show you. Just to give you a plan of attack. 
So, looking down at the cabinet, let's pull the shot back. Looking down at the cabinet, the radio itself, the chassis, goes to about here. So it, it occupies this space, which leaves me this entire space, minus a little bit of room here for the speaker, to build a nice power supply with a transformer. So I got plenty of real estate here to put a transformer in here and build it out. So I'm really happy about that. I've got plenty of room. Um, and most mostly you got because the batteries were big, so they had to give you room. Right? I'm sure they didn't give you an extra room because they were generous. So um, we've got plenty of room here. Um, from a cosmetic perspective, the case is solid. I don't see any loose joints or anything. I am going to clean the entire case with Gojo. I got that from John from Arkansas. First thing you do is you clean it and get all the gook off of it. And then I'll see what I need to do from a refinishing perspective. Um, if I can bring it back without having to do much on it, we'll, fi we'll figure that out later. But um, that's, uh, that's the story with this thing. So uh, I'm just looking for any visible signs of a model number. There's nothing here that tells me otherwise. And it looks like this bottom right here. Can we pull this up a little bit? There you go. It looks like this bottom is removable. So there's screws all around it. And if I had to, I could take this entire bottom off. I wouldn't need to do that, but it's it's doable if I had to. I wouldn't disturb it because there's probably some glue in there in the joints and stuff, but really, really cool. So that's our uh, that's our radio. So um, what we'll do next is we'll start the rewiring process. Okay, and uh, we'll show you how that's going along as we do it. And um, I think we're gonna, probably going to start with uh, the speaker. This is the speaker we took off, and why did I leave it? Why did I take the whole board out? So I protect it, right? If I, if I had removed these screws and took the speaker out, pretty good chance I'm going to put my finger through it, and we don't want to do that. So uh, we're going to be really careful with this thing and clean it up. And um, we're going to put some new wires here, just like that. And um, when we mount it back to the chassis, uh, I'm probably going to use some quick disconnect um, Molex connectors. I don't know yet. It just makes it that much easier if you ever have to remove it again to service it. So we'll put a nice new uh, piece of um, grill cloth on here and uh, we'll be good to go. It looks like it's got the old gold. I'm really putting the age of this radio at like 1940. It's good. I think it's post-war. I think they stopped making radios from 1940 two to 44 so I'm gonna put this radio at 1944 and that's simply because of that rub new rubberized wire so um, I think that's it for now so I'm gonna do a little bit more work here on the uh, on the wiring and then I will come back and show you that progress all right we'll be back okay so starting off I have my speaker I've cleaned it with 90% um, alcohol I paid special attention not to uh, wipe off the uh, markings on the speaker, right? Because the alcohol would cut through that. So I didn't use the alcohol there. But I've cleaned it, I've blown it out, and I've replaced the wires. And when I replace wires on something like this, I always like to put a piece of heat shrink tube right over around here, which is kind of like a strain relief, so these things don't pull apart. I left a lot of extra wire, because I need to determine what I'm going to do, how I'm going to connect it. I said I was going to use Molex connectors. But the first thing we want to do is we want to check for continuity. I haven't done it yet, so we're going to put a meter on each one of these leads, and let's see what we get on the meter. 1.2K, that's exactly what we need to have on the speaker. Okay, so um, with the exception of the grill cloth, which uh, I have to decide what I'm going to use, this speaker is cleaned and ready to be put back in the radio. And uh, we know that it ohms out good, and it looks pretty darn good, I'd say. There's no rust. Uh, cleaned up this metal a little bit. But aside from that, it's a good speaker. And by the way, um, I did find the model number of this uh, of this radio. It's a 04WG-468 Montgomery Ward, made prior to 1941. I don't know what year it was made. So um, <clears throat> the next, and I also found the documentation, so now I know how to wind the dial string and all that good stuff. Just to show you this wire, this is the wire that we're on the speakers. Let's move that so you can see it. I mean, this stuff is just disintegrated like that. All right, it's just hard as a rock, comes right off. 
So this is why we're going to have to rewire the set. Thankfully, it's not a lot of wires under there. Okay. So uh, speaker is ready to go. I'm staying true with the colors that I'm removing. This way, I keep it as close to authentic as possible. Um, but this will uh, this will certainly give it some life. Okay, on to the next thing. Okay, so we're on this ant antenna unit here, and you'll see I have a blue wire right here going to this loop, and I have a green wire right here, and I have a yellow wire right here. And then I have this big piece of Jagundala wire that it looks like someone attached so that they can run it. It's a very long piece of wire that they can run outside the unit. I'm going to remove this piece of wire for now, um, and if I need to add it later, I will. But I have to assume that this loop antenna that's here is um, is working correctly. Um, I'll ohm it out, of course. So we're going to remove this piece of wire. This piece of wire here was green, just like this one is right here. If you could see it right there. So um, I am going to take the um, the acid brush and a little bit of alcohol and see if I can clean that up a little bit. Because that just means that there's corrosion. I'm not going to be able to dig in here too deeply and I'm not going to mess around with it. But we'll just clean some of that off there so it kind of impedes anything that's going on from a corrosion perspective. I don't want to mess around with this thing too badly. So you'll see that it's taken some of that green off. We got a little bit to go on this side here. <clears throat> And that wire is cleaning up really nice now. I don't want to get this thing too wet because it's impregnated with glue, I think. That's what's holding it together. So we're going to squeeze that for a moment and make sure that it doesn't separate. It looks like they've taken a strip of cardboard and they've wrapped the wire around the cardboard and then sandwiched it. That's what it looks like. It looks like they put some kind of wax on this or something. That'd be my guess. You know, just for kicks, we should, um, we should own this thing out and see if it actually disconnected. Let's do that. Let's put this here. Let me pull this shot back a little bit so you can see it. Okay, there's our meter. Let's see what we get across these two. Getting about five ohms. And this one to this one, let's see what we get. Nothing. Nothing. This looks like it's an inner winding. Not sure what this one is connected to. Looks like there's wire hanging around here. Not sure what this thing is doing. It doesn't look like it's in good shape. I'll have to look at the schematic and see what this wire is doing right here. It's interesting. At least I know that these two windings are good though. Okay. Let me side wires on here and we'll be back. Okay, I've got the uh, wires here. I'm a little worried about this center loop. I'm not sure what it does, but I'm going to show you why I'm nervous. Let's see if we can get a little closer in there. Right about there. Oops. I lost it. Where is it? Oh, okay. See this here? That looks to me like this coil is open. Now, this is an antenna coil. I'm sure of that. I'm just not sure what kind of bearing that's going to have on the radio. Um, that could be why someone um, soldered a different antenna wire on there that I removed. That big thick wire I told you about that was here on this yellow side. This coil here may be bad. If it is, I may have to rewind it. So, we'll see what happens with that. We'll get to that road when we cross, <laughs> we'll cross that road when we get to it. Um, but this antenna is ready for now, okay? Back later. Okay, the next step is gonna be to get this tuning cap off and soak it. So, it looks like there's one wire here that goes to this antenna. And this other, it's the same connection point goes up to this grid. There is a wire here that goes underneath the chassis, and there's a ground strap right here. And when you look underneath, you'll see that there's um, 
three bolts and there's an insulating um, washer there so we're going to replace that that's rubber as hard as a rock so we'll get that off we'll throw it on the evaporust it'll clean it right up I'm sure of that first we'll put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, and get all the dirt out of it I can hear it rubbing a little bit and then we'll um, we'll put it in the evaporust and get some of this gook off of here and it'll be good as new all right so let's go do that we'll be back Okay, one thing I want to show you, I did remove the tuning cap, it's right here. And in this particular design, the tuning cap is isolated from the chassis. And they've got these grommets, which are in really bad shape. They go through the chassis, and then these screws go up right here, and go into the bottom of the tuning cap, and it's supposed to be isolated. But as you could see here, this is all cracked, and um, probably wouldn't work very well. So, uh, so I'm glad we're taking this off, and we're going to rip out these grommets, and we're going to put new ones in. Look at this fall apart. And we're going to replace them, and then when we put this thing back together, it's going to be uh, in much better shape than it is right now. So this is a good, ex a good reason to, for a moment to talk about why you don't just power up a radio sometimes, because you never know what you're going to get. Okay? So here's the wire that comes up from the bottom. Here's the wire that comes up from here. There's also a wire that goes to the top of this tube, and this is the ground strap. So while we have this open, we're going to clean all this out. We'll take the tubes out, clean the top of the chassis. But first order of business is to get this thing soaking, because there's some pretty bad gunk on this thing. All right, first it's going to go in the uh, in the ultrasonic cleaner, then it's going to go in the um, in the um, evapor rust overnight. Okay, that's it for that. Be back. Just to show you where we are, I have the tuning cap in the ultrasonic cleaner. I've already won it through one, one pass, and I've just flipped it over. And you can see it's uh, coming up clean. You can maybe see how filthy that water is. So all that gook is coming out of there. These, these cleaners work really well. You can get one at Harbor Freight for about 30 bucks. So we're going to let this one finish. There's about four and a half minutes left. And then after it's done, we're going to put it in the evapor rust overnight. And it'll get rid of a lot of the rust that's on this dial. And then after we do that, we're going to let it dry properly. And then we're going to lubricate it and grease it and make sure it's nice and smooth. So uh, you could, as, you, as you're watching this, you can see crap coming off of it. See that? So if any of you are restoring radios like this, I really suggest you get yourself one of these ultrasonic cleaners. It's really, really good. All right, I'll uh, show you after uh, I let it soak overnight and then what it looks like at the finished product. All right. See all that rust in there? We're going to get rid of all that rust. Okay, be back. Okay, before I put it in the evapor rust, you could see it really looks a lot better. It's clean. I thought it was more rusty than it is. But uh, it'll get rid of some of this. So we're going to dump it in there now. It's looking good. You'll, next time you'll see it, it'll be out of the evapor rust. Okay, it's the next day, and our tuning cap has been uh, soaked overnight in the evapor rust and I put it through the ultrasonic cleaner one more time and here it is looks brand new see that very smooth operation no rust there really was no rust on this thing in the first place so um, the evapor rust was really just a protective measure um, next thing to do here see these little bearings what you do is you take a toothpick and you put a little dab of white lithium grease on those bearings and you just work it in, and that will make this thing work trouble-free for another 70 years. Okay, so this is uh, ready to be uh, reinstalled. We do need to clean off these terminals right here. This is where the solder was. And uh, there's another connection that goes right here. But we're going to let this dry really, really well. Uh, so we're not going to reinstall it for any, at least for another 12 hours. We're going to let it dry out real good. But it's ready to go back in, okay? So that's, that's why you got to take the time with this stuff, because a dirty tuning capacitor is going to give you all kinds of problems. So if you think you're going to restore a radio and just blow it out with a you know with an air hose, you got to think again, because you've got to keep this stuff clean. That's the right way to do it, and it's really the right way to restore it. Okay? So we'll move on to the next piece. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take off this uh, tuning um, mechanism, because it needs to be cleaned. And it's really just two screws, and I'll show you what it looks like when we take it off. There's one, and there's two, and this unit just pulls right through. should drop right out of there. 
There's so much gook in there. Unless it looks like there's a Sioux ring in there. Let's see. There it is. It's just a lot of gook and grime in there. So we're going to pull that, pull that out like that. See all this garbage here? And there it is. And you'll see there is a little bit of rust here. So we're going to drop that in the um, in the evapo rust as well. And one tip for you: whenever you do things like this, always put the screws back so you don't lose them. Okay? Put them back there. In this case, I'm just going to put a piece of tape over it because it's threaded right here. Okay? So we'll throw that in the evapo rust. Okay. Now we're going to remove this entire bezel so we can uh, we can clean it. And there's really just two little screws here. Which, uh, which do that and holds this entire bezel in place and of course once we get that off we're going to remove that glass and I'll show you how to do that when I get there and we're going to clean the glass and, um, and make sure that that looks good when we put it back in so I've taken off the two screws let's see what's holding me, holding me in place here ah, there's one more screw right down there so we're going to remove that screw as well There we go. There we go. Okay. We've got our bezel removed. So now we can take this glass off. There's two screws right here that you take off and this slides out and you carefully clean it, making sure not to scratch the, uh, the paint. So now we have a chassis that we can really work on and clean. Okay? Be back. One last thing, of course you put the screws back in so you don't lose them. One here, one here, and one here. Okay. And so what we're going to do now is remove this dial glass. And we're going to be really careful with this. And I want to break it. All right. These things are irreplaceable. So there's two little screws here. One here. And there should be one here. And there's, a, there's a spacer and a metal bar that goes on top of it. So we're going to be really careful with that. Just like this, it pulls out. And you'll see it has little tabs there that the glass goes underneath. And this glass should just slide out right there. And just like that, we have our dial glass out. And you can see how filthy that is. And you'll notice that the paint is on the back. Looks like it's also on the front, it's on both sides. So we're going to be careful about that. I don't know if this if it was originally white and it's turned brown over the years. I don't really know the answer to that yet, um, but we'll see. I have to look at some uh, photographs of this radio and see if what color that background is. But here's our dial glass and now we can clean it. Okay? We'll be back. Okay, just as an update, I've cleaned this glass. Now you got to remember a few things about dial glass. One, it can be very sharp, so you got to be really careful. Two, the silk screen is on both sides on this particular one. You don't want to be spraying Windex on it or anything like that because you don't know if the paint is going to flake. What I did on this one is I simply ran it under water, got most of the surface dirt off, and I took some uh, some 90% rubbing alcohol and with a you know a soft brush just kind of rubbed it on real nicely and with a soft cloth just wiped it off and it's pretty much crystal clear at this point so the glass is restored before I install it back in here I'm gonna polish it and make sure that there's no fingerprints on it but this dial glass is now in good shape I am gonna take a little time to clean the frame before I put the glass back okay so uh, never use anything caustic on this stuff because it'll take the paint right off <clears throat> this particular one looks like it's silk screened white on the bottom and gold on top and I did check and this is actually a piece of felt it feels like um, so that's the correct color, so we're not going to touch that. It's going to be the way it is. All right, be back. Okay, where we are now is I'm looking at the chassis right here, and this is the back of the chassis. You'll see we have a, a pretty deep rust spot there. So we're going to take some of this uh, navel jelly, and we're going to put that right on that spot and get rid of that rust so it doesn't get any worse. This navel jelly stuff works well. Um, the main thing you got to remember with navel jelly is don't let it dry, right? You got to keep it wet. Um, it generally works pretty fast. It works a lot faster than evaporust. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting a little bit on a Q-tip and I'm just going to lay it on there and get rid of that rust. 
And what it'll do, I'm not going to put it on the entire chassis because it is going to um, eat away at the, the metal finish a little bit. And you got to remember this, this chassis was made in pre-war, so uh, it's probably got some wacky cadmium coating on it. So we're going to put just enough right there to kind of chip away at that, at that rust. I'm just going to lay it on nice and thick, just like that. Then we're going to let it sit. I'm going to put a little bit more on this end right here because this is also another spot that's developing. And this will stop it dead in its tracks and um, it'll, it'll be good. Uh, what it'll end up doing is turning that black and, um, but it won't be rust, which is good. That's what we need. Okay, so we're going to shut the camera off, let that work, and we'll show you what the end result looks like. Remember, navel jelly. You pick it up at Home Depot. Good stuff. Also, John from Arkansas has been using uh, vinegar, 4% 4, 4 vinegar, I think, white vinegar. Um, and that's a lot cheaper, even than the evapor rust. So that does a good job, too. It takes a little longer. This stuff works right away. Okay? We'll be back. Just to follow up, I took off the uh, navel jelly, and it's gone. So we're good. Got that all cleaned up now. Nothing to worry about. Smooth as silk. What I'll probably do is put a little bit of clear nail polish on there. Um, just to, uh, to make sure it doesn't come back. But we're good to go. Let's go on to the next thing. So here's a little tip that I got from John from Arkansas. When you got a case like this that's been laying around for about 60 years and you want to get it clean, you use a little bit of this Gojo. Just a little. Goes a long way. Gets all that dirt off there. I'll show you what it looks like. It's not abrasive, so it's not ruining the finish, but it'll take the dirt right off of that cabinet. And you would want to do that before you uh, refinish it, of course. Let's put a little bit more on here. Just want to get all that baked in dirt. Although I have to say, this, this is one of the cleanest radios that I've ever seen. I thought it was really a mess, but it's really not. There, there's our rag. That's good. And now at least we've got the surface dirt off of it. We've got a clean surface to work with, which is good. Okay? So that's a little trick you can use when you get one of these wood cabinets. <clears throat> you know, don't start using Pledge and all that stuff, Windex and <laughs> all that garbage. Just get the dirt off of it. It's nice and smooth. And you can do that on the inside and the outside. Last thing I'm going to show you um, in this episode is how I'm going to mount the uh, power supply. So let me uh, set that up and I'll be right back. Before we do that, I want to show you our tuning mechanism. Took that out of the Evapo Rust and it's looking pretty darn good. It goes right in there like that and there's a C-clip there that we're going to put back in. But this is, uh, this is looking mighty sweet right here. Okay? Let me show you how I'm going to mount the power supply. Okay, so here's our, um, here's our cabinet. And just for a reference, our chassis only goes right up to here. Okay? When the chassis is mounted, I have all this space open to mount the power supply. The only restriction I have is going to be a speaker that sticks out, but it's not very long. So here's how we're going to solve the problem. First of all, we're going to start with our transformer that we're going to use to convert this to an AC set. So this transformer I have here is a, is a relatively inexpensive one. If you look right here, I have my 6.3 volt filament winding. I have my 5 volt, which I'm not going to need. Here's my AC line, and then this is my high voltage, and this is 200, 200 center tapped. That should be plenty for what we're trying to do here. And what we're going to do is I have this, this case from an old um, Lambda um, power supply right there, okay? And I've stripped it out, and what we're going to do is we're going to mount this in here like that, and we're going to put our power supply in here, and I'm going to put my... Um, a circuit board inside as well in here it's going to have some diodes in there it's going to have an LM317 resistors capacitors the whole nine yards um, and then we're gonna we're gonna simply put this cover on it like this and let's make sure I don't pinch the wires 
So we're going to put this cover on it. It's going to be mounted just around there like that. Plenty of room here for the chassis. And of course there'll be a power cord sticking out and this is how you'll plug it in. So you'll plug it in, it'll go through this power supply that we're going to build and then it'll go right to this, uh, right to the chassis and do its job. Okay, so uh, that's going to be the, the master plan on that. One thing I want to also show you before I wrap up this first episode. If you remember, I took this out yesterday. And I it was explained to me that this was a modification to the radio that was probably sold by you know Ward's Airline or someone else. Basically, this radio originally had two 45-volt batteries totaling 90 volts for B+, and a one and a half. And this was kind of invented to tie the two 90-volt batteries together um, and, uh, and not have to buy two batteries. You buy one 90-volt. And these things are plugs. They actually come out. So that's where the original batteries plugged in. And they brought everything to this plug. So you could buy a 90-volt battery and plug it in. Okay? So uh, we're not going to reuse this on this radio because we're building this power supply. However, a little bit of good history there. So... Um, so that's going to be it for this episode. I don't want to make them too long. So what we're going to do in the next episode uh, is con I'm going to continue to clean this case and I'm going to continue to clean the chassis. I don't need to show you how to do that. I've given you some tips and tricks on how to clean. I am going to clean the inside of the case here because there's still a lot of dust in there. I'll continue to do that. In the next episode, we're going to begin the rewiring of the chassis. Uh, and we're going to make sure that uh, we do that correctly. We're also going to clean the chassis and clean the tubes and make sure, test the tubes and make sure they're all good. And my plan is to be able to throw this up on the antique radio battery eliminator and fire it up and see if it works. Of course, I still need to mount the um, tuning capacitor that we cleaned. So it's been drying all day. It's perfectly dry now. We're going to lubricate this like I told you. I'm going to put some lithium grease in there. And we have our dial glass all cleaned up and I'll show you what that looks like. So our dial glass has been reinstalled. It's been perfectly cleaned. You can see your face in it now. It's reflective. <laughs> Looks damn good. The way I cleaned this glass was a little bit of alcohol. I told you that. So I now have it mounted. So our dial glass is clean. So we're making good progress. Yeah, you know me. I like to roll along here. So um, <clears throat> that's going to be uh, for that's going to be it for this one. Uh, I'll put this up and let you guys check it out. And uh, I will continue to make progress here. All right. I'll see you guys in episode number two. See you later.